Jackhawk 3000. On today's episode of Geek Beat, I read everything that's put on the prompter in front of me. And it all begins now. Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Dropo. Hacking is a game for a lot of people. Since the birth of the internet, John Posazidis has been testing online security for big business, trying to break in, making sure their secrets are safe. Some of you may have seen me recently on ABC World News where they said that I was some kind of an internet security hacking expert, which I never told them I was. But anyway, I was talking about hacking and security because they were featuring stories about the living social hack that comp compromised about 50 million members and the AP Twitter hack that actually sent the stock market into a short frenzy. So, last week over in the Geek Beat IRC chat room, Zeus asked me to focus an episode on internet security. How is all this stuff happening, and what can people do about it? Zeus, this one's for you. Release the Kraken! All right, all these hacks we hear about happen in many different ways. It's not like in the movies where some genius kid just sits down and easily decrypts the Pentagon's security. We got something. Shall we play a game? No one can do that, so they take different approaches until they find one that works. Imagine a hacker getting a tech support job where he has access to email administration capabilities. He can search the system for the word password in email accounts and read any email that has unencrypted passwords in it. Later, when he takes a break and goes to the coffee shop, he can take his laptop and hop on the free Wi-Fi network using a packet sniffer app where he listens in on all the wireless traffic for unencrypted secrets. And to cap the day off, he can spend the afternoon doing social engineering attacks. That's where he calls up your sweet old grandmother and tells her he's from the bank and he needs to verify her password. Of course, all the attacks don't have to happen virtually. Smart hackers might take the easy route and break into a home, making it look like a burglary, when all they really want is a password written on the post-it note beside your computer. Likewise, pickpockets and purse snatchers might discover your passwords on that little folded piece of paper in your wallet. Yeah, I know it's there. So do they. And no one is immune, so if you really want to be scared, imagine a core developer for a major internet service like Facebook using a weak or compromised password. Millions or hundreds of millions of users could be at risk. Oh, and it's not always a hacker. Think about disgruntled employees. Businesses fire people or lay them off all the time. Now think how many have access to the company Twitter accounts, billing systems, and customer lists. And many, many businesses don't even keep that data encrypted. Scared yet? I am. In just a minute, I'll tell you what you can do to stay safe in an increasingly unsafe world. You know, in a world of uncertainty, it's nice to know there's at least one thing you can count on keeping you safe. Your Drobo. Drobos are the world's smartest data storage platforms. You can load a Drobo up with a bunch of hard drives and it'll create one big storage pool from even different sized drives. And if you ever need more storage, just swap out the drives one at a time and Drobo will grow with you as the years go by. Drobo backs up their world-class products with good old American technical support. So if you ever do have an issue, you'll get to talk to an expert who cares and who understands you. I always recommend keeping at least two copies of your data. So if you only have one copy of anything even remotely important, head over to drobo.com forward slash live and please let them help you choose the right Drobo so you can fix that problem. And when you go, tell them John P sent you. Now that you're sufficiently worried about your digital security, there are a few key things you can do to stay safe. Use stronger passwords. A six-digit lowercase password would only take a computer a few minutes to hack, but an eight-digit mixed-case password would take centuries. Speaking of mixed case, use unique passwords. About 50% of all passwords can be found in a known list of the top 500. Yours should have uppercase, lowercase, and special characters. It should also not mirror a normal English word. Make it hard. 
To make matters more complicated, you need to use different passwords for different services. That way, if one login is stolen, it doesn't work for a criminal everywhere. You can read more about password security at geekbeat.tv forward slash passwords. Let's not forget about third-party authentication with Twitter, Facebook, Google, etc. People forget they use Twitter to log on to other services like clout.com, for example. So you need to go through and revoke any permissions for things you aren't using regularly. Having said all that, your biggest risk by far is your cell phone. It has access to your email account. It gets your SMS verifications from your bank. You might have other passwords or personal information stored on it in an unencrypted note somewhere, not to mention those compromising texts and photos. So always use a screen lock on your phone. Make sure you have the Find My Phone feature enabled or get an app for that. And if you ever lose your phone, immediately log in and remotely wipe it. It's far worse to lose your phone than to leave your credit card sitting on a table in a crowded restaurant. One last little thing before we go. No, I will not hack your boyfriend, girlfriend, boss, child, school, or evil overlord's password for you. I am not going to break the law and risk jail time for you, so don't even send me an email asking. Unless you're an extremely, extremely hot chick and you let me pick you up. I'm John P. And I may be reading your email right now. I'll be so nervous, though. I'll, I'll have I'll, I'll I'll probably barely even be able to do it. Yes, I might just curl up in a ball and cry like a little girl. Who's the man? I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs>